Well, good morning, everyone, and can I welcome members to the eighth meeting in 2017 of the Delegated Powers and Law Reform Committee. Agenda item one is instruments subject to affirmative procedure, and no points have been raised by our legal advisers on the draft Local Government Finance Scotland Order 2017 or the draft Carbon Accounting Scheme Scotland Amendment Regulations 2017 or the draft International Organisations Immunities and Privileges Scotland Amendment Order 2017. So is the committee content with these instruments? Thank you. Agenda item two is an instrument subject to the negative procedure. And the first item there is the Council Tax Reduction Scotland Amendment Regulations 2017 SSI 2017 number 41. These regulations make further amendments to the Council Tax Reduction Scotland Regulations 2012 and the Council Tax Reduction State Pension Credit Scotland Regulations 2012, otherwise referred to as the Principal Regulations. The Principal Regulations were introduced by the Scottish Government in January 2013 to reduce the Council tax liability of people who have a low income following the UK Government's abolition of Council tax benefit from April 2013. And from April 2013, people who were previously in receipt of council tax benefit received an equivalent reduction in liability for council tax, provided their circumstances remained the same, to the support they would have received by way of council tax benefit. It is suggested by our legal advisers that the regulations before us today raise a devolution issue, for the same reasons that the committee has considered apply to the Council Tax Reduction Scotland Amendment No. 2 Regulations 2016 SSI 2016 No. 253. That is to say, our legal advisers consider that the regulations raise a devolution issue as they may relate to matters which are reserved by Section F1 Social Security Schemes of Part 2 of Schedule 5 to the Scotland Act 1998. In other words, there is a doubt that the regulations are within devolved competence. It is recognised that the Scottish Government takes a contrary view. Since September last year, a new Exception 10 to the Social Security Reservation has given the Scottish Parliament powers to create new benefit schemes in areas of devolved responsibility where the requirements of the exception are satisfied, including that the new scheme must be funded from the Scottish Consolidated Fund. Following the committee's guidelines on when a consolidating instrument may be useful, it can also be noted that the principal 2012 regulations are much in need of consolidation, as this is the 11th amending instrument. We may wish, therefore, to suggest to the Scottish Government that reframing a new discrete scheme in a consolidating set of regulations could avoid the Committee's concern were that scheme to comply with the requirements of Exception 10. So, do members have any comments or not? Stuart? Yeah, convener, uh, thank you. Um, is it, oh, I've listened to also what you had to say, and certainly with the, uh, with the paperwork. Um, the, I'm in agreement with the, uh, with the Scottish Government uh, on, the, uh, on the power that, uh, that they have. Uh, I think there, there is some validity in, uh, in some of the aspects that have been discussed regarding um, this uh, Exception 10 uh, aspect, but uh, uh, I do actually believe that the, the Scottish Government actually do have the power. Fair enough. Uh, that has been the position that you and your colleagues have adhered to over a number of years. And and that's absolutely uh, great. Anybody else got anything to say? I have some concerns. I hear what Stuart's saying and I appreciate what's gone before. But I, well, my concerns would be, I think we've taken legal advice. And not being a lawyer, I would seek legal advice and I would also take their legal advice on board. So I, I think that Possibly, I think there is a validity question here. Right. I think it does raise a devolution issue. 
Okay. Well, um, thank you. That would certainly be my reading of it. Right. Well, um, we may not agree over this as before. Um, so, uh, firstly, does the committee wish to draw the regulations to the attention of the Parliament on reporting grounds F on the basis that they raise a devolution issue? And um, we'll need a proposer. So, I'll, I'll propose um, that this, um, this regulations raise a devolution issue and then we will have a vote on that if that's if everyone's happy with that way of proceeding so uh, can those who believe i'm um, sorry so the prop i have to read in the <laughs> correct wording the proposition is that the committee considers that the regulations raise a devolution issue and should be drawn to the attention of the parliament on that basis are we agreed we're not. So we'll have a division. So those who believe that this uh, raises a devolution issue, raise their hands now, please. That's three. And those who do not believe that it raises a devolution issue, thank you very much. Well, and so it, the motion is agreed to um, by a vote of three to two, and, and therefore we will now proceed on the basis uh, that this, uh, the regulations do raise a devolution issue. So, we'll now move to the, the next part of um, this discussion. And does the committee wish, um, notwithstanding the foregoing, to suggest to the Scottish Government that framing a new discrete scheme could avoid the committee's concern were that scheme to comply with the requirements of Exception 10. Are we all agreed to that? Yes. Right. Thanks very much. And thirdly and finally, does the committee agree to suggest to the Scottish Government that there would be a further benefit of accessibility to readers if consolidated regulations could be produced which comply with the requirements of Exception 10? Thank you. So, no points have been raised by our legal advisors on further instruments. A participation request procedure, Scotland Regulations 2017 SSI 2017 number 39, or non domestic rating unoccupied property, Scotland Amendment Regulations 2017 SSI 2017 number 43 or on the inshore fishing prohibition of fishing and fishing methods, Outer Hebrides, Order 2017, SSI 2017, number 48, or on the Scottish Roadworks Register, Prescribed Fees, Regulations 2017, SSI 2017, number 49, or on the sale of tobacco and nicotine vapour products by persons under 18, Scotland, Regulations 2017 SSI 2017 number 50, or on the sale of tobacco, Register of Tobacco Retailers, Scotland Amendments Regulations 2017 SSI 2017 number 51. So, as no points have been raised, is the committee content with these instruments? Thank you. Agenda item three is instruments not subject to any parliamentary procedure and no points have been raised by our legal advisers on the Community Empowerment Scotland Act 2015, Commencement Number 7, Order 2017, SSI 2017 Number 40. So is the committee content with this instrument as well? Thank you. Now move to Agenda Item 4, which is the Child Poverty Scotland Bill. And it's a consideration of the delegated powers within the Child Poverty Scotland Bill. And the purpose of the bill is to set four statutory income targets contributing to the eradication of child poverty. The bill confers one power to make subordinate legislation on the Scottish ministers. Section 32 of the bill provides... Sorry? Uh, thank you, Ian. Section 3.2 of the Bill provides that the Scottish Ministers may, by regulations, change the base date mentioned for the time being in the subsection 1 for measuring the absolute poverty target. 
The current base date in subsection 1 is the 1st of April 2010. Section 3.3 provides that the power in subsection 2 is subject to the negative procedure. So, does the committee agree to ask the following questions in relation to this power? Section 3.2 provides that the Scottish Ministers may, by regulations, change the base date mentioned for the time being in subsection 1 of that section, currently financial year beginning 1st of April 2010, for the absolute poverty target. So does the committee agree to ask why, instead of this regulation-making power, Section 3 of the Bill itself could not have expressed the 1st of April 2010 baseline date to apply until the 31st of March 2020, and thereafter to change automatically to the 1st of April 2020 for the 10-year period leading to the target date of 1st of April 2030? Also, Section 3.3 provides that the power to make regulations in Section 3.2 is subject to the negative procedure. The Delegated Powers Memorandum indicates that the current baseline date of 1 April 2010 is set to allow a 10-year period for comparison between that base year and the 2020 target, which was originally set out in the, 20, in the UK Child Poverty Act 2010. It also explains that it is likely that the future baseline date will need to be changed to 2020 to reflect the move towards a target date in 2030. The memorandum indicates that it is the Scottish Government's intention that the regulation-making power would only be exercised once. And so, in light of the stated intention that the power to make regulations would be made as a consequence of a 10-year comparison between equivalised net household incomes, does the committee agree to ask if it would not be more appropriate that, if a power to make regulations is necessary, it is subject to the affirmative procedure rather than the negative procedure to ensure that the Parliament can exercise an enhanced level of control over the setting of the baseline date for absolute poverty. Are we agreed to that? <coughs> Many thanks. <coughs> Agenda item five is a contract third party rights Scotland bill. And it's a consideration of the delegated powers within the contract third party rights Scotland bill. And as members will be aware, our consideration of the bill today is in our capacity as a secondary committee, considering the powers within the bill, which differs from our role as the lead committee, which looks at the policy merits of the bill. The bill contains only one delegated power, which is a commencement provision. It is suggested that we could be content with that power. So, can I invite the committee to agree that it is content with the one power in the bill and to reflect that in, in its stage one report as the lead committee for the bill. Okay? Thank you. And finally, um, at our next meeting on the 14th of March, as well as our regular consideration of SSIs and an approach paper on the seatbelts on schools transport bill, uh, we will hold our first evidence session on the contract third party rights Scotland bill. Um, and on, on that day, the, the Scottish Government Bill Team and the Scottish Law Commission uh, will give evidence. So that will be next week, and we'll look forward to seeing you all at that time. Thank you very much for your attendance today. Thank you. I now close the meeting.